And tonight, for the first time, we are learning more about the inner workings of the free fall ride. We've learned the 14 year old victim should have never been on the ride in the first place. Our team coverage continues now with New Six investigator Maris Badcock. This manual was written exclusively for Orlando free fall. And one of the biggest bombshells inside include height and weight restrictions for the ride. Nearly 200 pages written in a manual describe exactly how attendants of Orlando Freefall were supposed to operate the ride, which killed 14-year-old Tyree Sampson last week when the teen fell from the drop tower during a freefall simulation. According to the manufacturer of the ride, Fun Time Thrill Rides, the maximum weight is 286 pounds. Sampson's coach told us he weighed 320 pounds. On Friday, we spoke with John Stein, the director of marketing and sales for Slingshot Group, the company that runs the Orlando Freefall. Here's what he told us then about height and weight restrictions. You know, we have a, a size restriction, you have to be 50 inches or, or, or taller, and um, you have to be able to fit in the seat. And, uh, and, and uh, so there's really no weight restriction unless you cannot fit in the seat. The manual also describes specific limitations for large people. Be careful when seeing if large guests fit into the seats. Check that they fit within the contours of the seat and the bracket fits properly. If this is not so, do not let this person ride. And I don't care how athletic a person is, how strong they are, there's no way a person who weighs that amount suffering or, or subjected to negative 2Gs can hold themselves in the ride. Ken Martin has served as a ride safety expert for over a quarter century, even serving as an expert witness in several ride accident cases. The restraint was definitely not properly secured. I know and seen pictures of the ride that indicate there are no seat belts on the ride, which would, you know, classify as one redundant safety system. But the new records released Monday show that the manufacturer, Funtime Thrill Rides, specifically advocated for no seat belt, attaching this letter to the manual. The seat and shoulder restraint system has two independent locking devices and the shoulder restraints are monitored. There is no need for an extra safety or seat belt because the seat and restraint system fulfill more than the requirements. The manual also says that attendants are also supposed to manually check the restraints when loading a guest, pulling on it to make sure it locks. Workers are also supposed to check the restraints regularly enough so that every seat is inspected two times in a 30-day period. If it's faulty, it must be replaced before it can be used again. The manual also adds some context to what the ride attendants were caught on camera saying to one another after Samson's fall. According to the manual, green lights indicate the restraints are closed. No light means the restraints are open. And a red light indicates the restraints are faulted. The ride will not ascent unless those harnesses are locked in. And, you know, again, so... There were no indications that there was anything different, so this is what we've got to find out. State investigators also released a preliminary accident report. In it, it reads, when the magnets engaged, the patron came out of the seat. Harness was still in a down and locked position when the ride stopped. I emailed Slingshot Group and Funtime Thrill Rides tonight for a comment after the newest developments came out, but so far we have not heard back. There are at least five free fall rides in the world using Fun Times manufacturing model. Two in the U.S. at Dollywood and Icon Park here in Orlando have been shut down pending investigations. I'm Maris Badcock, getting results, News 6. Maris, thank you. You can watch more continuing coverage of the Drop Tower investigation at clickorlando.com.